Sì, no, non basta, sta qui con Santo. Avete avuto? Santo in low. What are we doing? Shaman Kirtan. Prabhupada's Upadesha Amrut. Who is a Brahmin? Prabhupada is saying. As long as a person has not realized this Brahma Vastu, his Deha Dharmi, Mano Dharmi, then he's not uh, realized Brahman. The only one who has realized this Para Brahma is Brahman. And he has the Samanda with this Brahma Vastu. And he will strive to achieve this Brahma Vastu. The body is material. The body has no relationship with Bhagavan. Not going to do anything with this body. The body is subject to change. Sometimes it is favorable and sometimes unfavorable. Therefore, it is not possible. If it is not possible to offer this body under the service of Bhagavan, then even still, even so, gradually you will have to offer this body in the service of Sri Bhagavan. Then gradually the purpose of having this body will be successful. So as in when we try offering this body in Bhagavan's service, we sometimes become hopeless, unenthusiastic. Therefore the only solution is, if in the Anugati of Guru Vaishnavas, then, then you see, a good doctor, he gives good medicine to the patients and he also arranges a proper diet. And whatever is favorable, he arranges everything, makes everything favorable. Similarly, by being under the guidance of Guru Vaishnavas, one will never be hopeless. One will never be fearful. They will enthuse your sadhan, your bhajan. They will give you patience. And they will make you, they will assure you that the path that you have undertaken is proper. Or else one may think, oh, I'm doing so much for Bhagwan, But still, um, everything is very unfavorable for me. My mind is not happy. Neither am I happy. So what should I do? But if you go in the ashray and Anugata the Mahabhagavats, then you will not even realize any of these difficulties. They will uh, see the Mahabhagavat Guru Varga, they never instruct anyone because they see that everyone is instructed, is engaged in the service of Krishna. Or else sometimes they think, even if they don't follow, then they'll be uh, guilty of this Vaishnava Agya. They will disobey my instructions. So they will not instruct anyone. So therefore they might disobey, disrespect. So even then it is difficult. And therefore what should one do? When, when one does Krishna Sivanda Guru is Anugatya, then just as when Raghunath Das Goswami came to Mahaprabhu, Mahaprabhu offered him in the hands of Sarup Damodar Goswami. When Siddha Sarup Brahmachari came to Prabhupada Sashi Thakur, he offered him in the hands of Bhakti Vek Bharti Goswami. My Guru Maharaj was offered in the hands of Kesha Goswami Maharaj, Vinodda. You see, Tulsi Das is saying only, the, only one bird knows the language of another bird. When Garuda was illusioned, bewildered by Ram's Leela, then he was sent to who? Kakbushandi. Because birds of the, fla- birds of the same feather flock together. So similarly, a Kanishra Adhikari can offer certain help. A Madhya Madhikari can offer 60% help. But a Rudha Madhikari can offer 100% help. 100% he can offer help. But to go to Nuttam Bhagavad and to understand his instructions and to practice in one's own life, so who will help? Madhya Madhikari, he will help one. Or the Kanishra Adhikari will help one. Understand the Uttam Bhagavad and understand his instructions. Because Uttam Bhagavad 
He is always absorbed in Bhagavad Seva, Bhagavad Chintan, Bhagavad Dhyan. If he sees anyone engaged in little Seva, then he starts respecting that person so much. He glorifies that person so much. And then he will become very proud. Just see a Mahabhagavad Vaishnava is glorifying even one who has done even a little service. One day, Prabhupada Sashi Thakur, he was in Yogpit with all the Bhaktas. At the time, this Maniki Bahadur Maharaj, he came and then he uh, he bought a golden uh, glass and he put like milk in this glass with cream. So in Prabhupada, he gave this glass full of milk. So he just took a little and touched it with his lips and then he gave it to one of his sevaks. So then one of his sevaks, just as Narada Shivi, bought this Parajat flower and the entire assembly he gave it to Krishna and he said, give it to your most beloved queen. He has 16,008 queens. So everyone was thinking that, oh, every queen is saying, I'm very dear to Krishna, I'm very dear. In Nagna Jiti, there are so many. Satyabama, Rukmini, Pitravinda. Satyabama was thinking, I am the most chief queen. But Krishna, he gave this flower to Rukmini. And then you see, yesterday Prabhupada, he touched this glass with his lips. And then he gave it to this sevak. And then this sevak was thinking, that oh, I have received this glass full of milk. And now he was not caring for anyone. And then he was thinking, that oh, Prabhupada, he is... Uh, given me this golden glass of milk and he's given me the entire glass full of milk so he was thinking I'm a very near and dear sevak of Prabhupada and after some time what did he do he started disturbing all the other devotees so Prabhupada he told Vinod that Vinod Brahmachari go and uh, pack all his belongings and leave him there at the railway station and Vinod Bihari was given this instruction but Vinod Bihari he did not meet Prabhupada that day in the evening so and Prabhupada he asked Paramananda Prabhu saying what happened go and call Vinod here so then they saw that his door was locked from the inside they said knock, knock at the door and bring him here tell him Prabhupada is calling him so then they knocked the door and then they called him and Prabhupada told him Vinod I told you to send this Brahmachari away why didn't you follow my order? Then we not said, Prabhupada, what can I do? How can I leave him there? But again he'll fall inside this Maya. Again he'll be very sad in his life. How can I do this? Then Prabhupada said, no, you'll have to punish him. And immediately he called another Brahmachari and he told him, immediately you make him leave. And this other Brahmachari, he came. He took all his belongings, packed it, and threw it outside and took this Brahmachari, made him sit in a bus and he made him leave. And then Vinod Bihari said, Prabhupada, so much difficulty, one devotee has come to your lotus feet. And again he'll fall into this world of Maya, again he'll suffer so much. So how can I leave him? So Vinod, so Prabhupada said, Vinod, he is a Vaishnava, Vinod said. He is your sheltered Sevak, what can I do? Someone else, but how can I punish him in this way? Because Ram, he told Lakshman, that Sita can take as many things as she wants from the store and, and, and tell Sita that Sita had promised previously that she will go to all the Rishi Mahashis and their wives and give many gifts jewels, ornaments and all these things. So Sita could not fulfill a promise. So tell Sita no, she can take as many things as she wants from the store house and she can cross the Ganga and then leave her there and tell her that Ram has left you forever now. Don't tell her before. Only tell her after you've left her at the place of the rishis. Lakshmana saying, how can I do this? What fault has Sita committed? Why should I renounce Sita? So what can I do? Ram has said, given this instruction, is Mariyada Purushottam. So then they will also make me leave Ram if, he, if I don't listen to him. So Prabhupada, he told Vinod, but Vinod he did not do. And anyhow, the others, they were made their Brahmachari leave, but not Vinod. So the Tumadigari, the Mahabhava, to understand his vichar and to practice in one's own life. 
practice all these instructions one whole and power one therefore the Madhyam Bhagavad he is 66 percent capable of giving all these instructions and the Kanishya Dikari he is 33 percent he can offer help means one quarter according to one's uh, qualification he will give these instructions one may think I will follow the Uttamadhikari but on one cannot understand the Uttamadhikari so therefore there is this Kampanta means the path of gradual advancement Krama Mukti Mark and Uttam Bhagavad in one minute in one moment you can change one but Prabhupada himself is saying they say there was a rat and the Rishi went and asked the rat why are you crying saying oh even cat is behind me so then again he became a cat then he said oh the dog wants to eat me so he said alright make me a dog and so he said the dog is going everywhere and then the lion wants to eat me then he said alright then, then what do you want to become then you said become a lion and then they, they said oh just see the rishi he made this mouse into a lion so then what to do now now the lion was thinking see see the guru varga even if you see if they make a paddha jiva they even they are in the position of a mahabhagavad is still they change their sabhav doesn't change they have not achieved this adhikar you see Tushanku was uh, forcibly sent to heaven but first he should be qualified he should do the proper sadhana to go to heaven he wants to uh, he wants to become he wants to achieve siddhi in one day no need to do sadhana so then this way he made the he made the mouse become a lion then everyone was insulting that mouse so the rishi has made this mouse into a lion so then he was thinking alright now I'd go eat the rishi because the rishi is the cause and when he tried attacking the rishi then from far he came then the rishi he told the lion now he's saying now you become a lion now you become a mouse again now and again you become a mouse again now and this is this is good for you to become a mouse again so this is the Mahavad Guru Varga if they are giving adhikar to someone qualification without sadhan how can they advance then then you see they will become heavy they will attack that person also then then they will think they will think oh I am greater than that person in Mathura there was one bhakta one devotee he was there then he was thinking oh Gurudev is having me sit with him on stage and then he was thinking Gurudev is uh, senior to be my age then everyone is respecting him then they will respect him then if I become Guru I also they will be respected so then then when one becomes proud then what will happen so pride makes one very stunted you see if you take a person on his lap then he will think oh there is no person greater than me in this world I have achieved everything but you see who has been empowered who has given the Shakti and he is doing sadhan then he will be humble he will be meek because the fruit of knowledge is humility is meekness not being rebellious Uddhandata means to be rebel rebellious and then gradually when one becomes Kanishta and then Madhyam and then from Madhyam he becomes Uttam Kanishta Uttam Madhyam and Uttam Uttam and then they say he is respecting everyone and then he becomes the recipient of everyone's mercy he becomes he uh, beseeches everyone for that mercy and then he is always thinking he is uh, requesting everyone for that mercy or else you see before one person he puts a belt around one person and then he starts uh, putting shampoo on the dog and then he starts feeding it milk and then the dog thinks that I am also very much respected uh, he said even this, even the even the son is not as much respected as me and then you see what will happen then this is very unfortunate condition mm. so by having bhakti 
then one will be detached. One will have virakti and he will realize Bhagawan also in his heart. And then gradually what will happen? As one, as one practices bhakti, then three symptoms will appear. He will be humble. He will be meek. He will be detached. This a tree which has fruits is always bowing down. Therefore, you see, don't be arrogant. Don't be proud. You see, tree having fruits is always bowing down. But the true tree which doesn't have fruit, fruits is always standing erect. But one who is very qualified, he'll be very humble. He knows how to respect everyone. See, if a pot is half filled, then it starts making a sound. But if a pot is full of water, then it will not make a sound. But pot half filled will always make sounds. Similarly, you see, he, one is speaking many loud things, many things, but inside he is not practicing, he is not learning to respect others. Then where will he get this Shakti from? Because Bhagawan is passing, transmitting Shakti to the Bhaktas and Bhaktas have given one Ashray. So it is a matter of great fortune that they are looking after us. So one should realize this. So therefore, what will happen then? Then great fall. Mahapatam. Even if one person thinks he is liberated, then what will happen? Because of refusing to serve. This uh, Arvind Daksha, he whose eyes are like lotus flower, then what will happen? Even if he is attained the stage of bhav, mukti, then he is disrespecting the bhaktas, or disobeying the bhaktas, he is not uh, properly respecting them, then what will happen? Then he will fall into jhannam, means into the netherworld. So therefore, there he will no longer be happy, no longer he will have shanti. As long as one, when he sees how the ancient devotees I performed sadhan bhajan. The Guru Arga have done so much sadhan, so much tapasya. And because of their sadhan tapasya, we are getting these fruits. As you see, we come to the feet of the Guru Arga, we have received their shelter. Now we have everything now. And now there is love everywhere. Now we don't have any care, any anxieties. And this way. As you see here, 56 kinds of food. Everything is present now. All kinds of things. But still we are very ungrateful. There is no gratefulness. So this is a cause. This is the first symptom. Once patam, fall down. You see in Vrindavan Dham, one is achieving residence here out of great fortune. If Vrindadevi herself would not have given one entrance into this Dham, then how could one have been stayed in this Dham? How could one have stayed here? So could one have been grateful to Bindadevi? This is Krishna Nagari, this is Krishna's dham. But if you don't remember Krishna, and if you do not remember Radharani, then how could we possibly achieve the mercy of Bindadevi? So therefore, even if one reaches the Mahabhagavats and takes a shelter, and even they give mercy, but still if you don't do sadhan, and if you do not practice in our own lives, and if you do not learn to give respect, then what will happen? Therefore, take shelter of the Madhyam Bhagavat. And you must see first that if we can we must learn also from the Kanishta Adhikaris, learn to respect them also because the Kanishta Adhikari, he has Nishta, he has one pointedness. Ekantika. What is this Ekantika? Ekantikta means without Krishna I will not worship anyone. I will not take anyone else's prasad. I will not listen to anyone else. So one he has his nishta. He is endowed with his nishta. Krishna Kanishta means this one point in us. So the Lord is Sweet Shri Krishna. Then he is the Kanishta Dikari. Any anyway, Guru Vaishnavas will say something to examine him. Saying uh, today you uh, serve this Devata then he'll say no this is not possible for me saying okay you take someone's prasad he's saying no why? because no one has given me shelter 
Those who have given me shelter, you see the bhaktas, they have given me the shelter. If they don't give me shelter, then still it's better for me to die than serve the dev devatas. I don't need this dakshina, this money, because Kanishna Dikari, Kanishna Dikari, he has this trita, unflinching faith. Or else, without this unflinching faith, then, then you see then, even if he's anywhere, then he'll, then he'll think, oh, anywhere, I can be swayed. He's very prone to be swayed by things he faces. You see, if you take anything, one should not take anything except Bhagavad Prasad, Bhagavad Chanamrit. So, Kanishra Dikari he has his nishtha. So, we don't have this nishtha as well. We don't think about these things. And then we become absorbed in all these things, but not. So therefore, by staying with the Kanishta Dikari and by following the Kanishta Dikari and by following his instructions, you see Raghunath Das Goswami is in the Parikar. And then he went to Jagannath Puri. And for two years, these big festivals are being organized there. And then Mahaprabhu, he asked, why is Raghunath not inviting me anymore? Then they said, oh, Raghunath is not happy. Because Raghunath is saying that Mahaprabhu is not happy. That he is uh, organizing these big feasts for everyone. So what does Raghunath eat now? So after 10 o'clock in the night, he's standing near the entrance of Jagannath. And these big landlords are coming, these big sets are coming. And they're giving to all the beggars. And he takes a little... And he takes a little of this prasad and anyhow he maintains his life. So then Mahaprabhu again asks Sarvadam, where is Raghunath? Now he is no longer standing near the gate as well. So he is going to that people, he is going to that place where Mahaprasad is being distributed. And then line, he is standing in line and everyone is getting a little of this Mahaprasad. Then again he asked, Raghunath is not even standing there in line to see this Mahaprasad and what is he eating? Then he said, then whatever is thrown away whatever Mahaprasad is thrown away then that Mahaprasad is thrown away he takes that and then he washes it and whatever is left he has a little salt, little water and then he does bhajan then Mahaprabhu he said oh, how fortunate he said Raghunath Swayaragya is renunciation are like lines etched on a stone because lines etched on a stone are irreversible they can never be reversed. So Raghunath Das Goswami, just see, he was a prince, the son of a king. So where did he get this nishta from? You see here. So one may, one can think, what need is there to eat? There's rabdi, halwa, budi, kachodi and all these things. So what you see here, Das Goswami, he has this nishta. Therefore, by staying with the Kanishta Dikari, one will have this nishta. Follow Chaturmasya, follow Ekadashi. And all of this Janmashtami, Ramnami, Narsingha Jayanti fast on all these days and become detached from the senses and the objects of your senses. And by worshipping the senses, what will happen? One will become the Pujari, not of Bhagwan. By become the Pujari of the body and the senses. And this way he's feeding the body and senses the whole day. And he's serving the body and senses. And what will happen? Will the body and senses be with you at all times? After two or three days, they'll betray you. Then, they'll make you very sick. And they'll make you sick diseased. And in the end, they'll even leave you behind. And then where will we go? So therefore, don't be a worshipper of the body and senses. Be a pujari or Sri Bhagwan. Have this nishta. And then when you're practicing properly, then gradually this attachment to the body will go away. This moha will go away. And then the body will no longer uh, pain you. And then you see you leave your body behind like how a snake leaves his skin behind. And then one will never be sad. Even when he is leaving his body. And say, that day will come. What kind of day? And only leave his body very easily, effortlessly, he'll leave his body behind. And he'll be very humble, very patient. And then once his mind and body, there, 
absorb the lotus feet of Sri Bhagwan, then his Atma and Paramatma will leave, will go to Bhagwan. And as long as one has his Ashrakti, then you see it's very difficult for him to leave his body behind. That cannot even be seen. Then he cannot even remember Sri Bhagwan, and you see the body. Life is also not leaving from his body. You see, he's having pet souls, worms are appearing in his body. But still, why? Because there's moha and ashakti for this body. So how can he leave this body behind then? So much attachment to this body. For hundred years, one has been servant of this body. And one cannot leave this body behind so easily. Because he's not engaged for this paramartha, spiritual welfare. At the time he realizes, at the time of leaving this body. Therefore, if you want to be a pujari, then be a pujari of Prabhu, of Sri Bhagavan. And then gradually, by following Ekadashi, by following all these vratas, you see, you cannot follow Ekadashi by eating chapan bow. Ekadashi means what? That for these eleven senses, you are only giving this bhagavatras. In the this, this Narsina Jayanti is coming, Ram Naomi is coming, Janmashtami is coming, Gaur Purnima is coming, all these different festivals. And gradually, discipline your senses. And then you will be like Das Goswami. For three days, you see, this food that had been thrown away, he took that food. And he was, had that food washed and he had given that food. Mahaprabhu, we heard that Das Goswami was eating this food. And then he reached there in the middle of the night. So down Raya Ramananda, they were looking for Mahaprabhu in the computer. Where is Mahaprabhu? And there they found Mahaprabhu, then Raghunath's Bhajan Kutir. There Raghunath Das Goswami had washed all this food and he was mixing it with salt and water. Then Mahaprabhu told Raghunath, every day you are eating this Nirgun Vastu, are you not giving to me as well? And then he took little from Raghunath's hand and he put it in his mouth. And then Sarup Damodar, he caught all of Mahaprabhu's hand. He said, don't take more than this. Then Mahaprabhu, he told Raghunath, that Raghunath from today, then he said, Govinda, he will give you little of my own prasad, a remnant to you. Now don't go anywhere else now. Don't eat anything else. So just see the mercy that Mahaprabhu gave to Raghunath Das Goswami. Mahaprabhu, he called Govinda Prabhu. And he's saying, just see, I've got this bhiksha. So make this, divide this bhiksha into four parts. One part will go to Haridas Thakur. One part to you. Because where else will the Sevak go? And one part will go to Govinda. And one part will go to Raghunath. And the other one fourth will come to me. And which other rule did Mahaprabhu make? And see, one nana is four paisa. So this four paisa's boga will be accepted. Before so much boga would be had. And Ramchandra Puri, he criticized Mahaprabhu. That, oh, he's eating sweets. His hands are entering inside his room. You see, somewhere these hands are surely hiding somewhere in the corner of Mahaprabhu's room. All night he's only eating sweets. And Ramchandra Puri, what would he do? He'd feed Mahaprabhu very ni- He'd feed anyone very nicely. And then he said, oh, you've become a sannyasi only to eat all these things. Why are you eating so much? And he's giving more and more and more and more. And so he starts criticizing that person. And so one, in one hand he's strangling that person, in the other hand he's holding his feet. Mm. So then Mahaprabhu would say, yes, what he's doing is good. But the other devotees of Mahaprabhu, they were so worried for Mahaprabhu, thinking because of Ramchandra Puri, when will this person who's always criticizing live? And how will Mahaprabhu accept what is given? So then Adwait Prabhu, he then, he prayed to Indra. That today there should be so much rain. And then, at the time Mahaprabhu, he made sure that no one else would come to his house to honor Mahaprasad, except Mahaprabhu. Then there was a huge courtyard there. And then there, he locked the door from all four sides. And then there's a 50 kilos of rice was offered as boga. 5 kilos of ghee was offered. And then there's a 50 kinds of sabji were offered everywhere. He himself cooked. And then he offered. And Mahaprabhu said, good. Just see the prayer that you have for Bhagavan. You're offering so many different kinds of boga. And then this way Mahaprabhu, he, he, he offered pranams to Mahaprabhu. And he said, every day you're cheating me. As a nasi. But today you will not cheat me. And this way you're not eating chapan bog here. You're all eating every day in Jagannath temple but not here. And then Mahaprabhu said, oh, sit down here. And then with his own hands, Adai Sarah started feeding him. He started feeding him so many different kinds of things. Then he offered and gave him much money. He said, now I'm happy. So satisfied. Sarvam Pandit also did the same thing. And then this way, when Mahaprasad was offered, then Sarvam Pandit, he had his son-in-law, Amok. 
Sir Namo he came there. And he's saying, oh, just see how much the sannyas is eating. He's eating 50 kilos of rice. And he's eating so many different kinds of sweets, so many different kinds of sabjis, all these things. That's why he's accepted sannyas. Then Saram Matacharya, he said, all right. And then he said, oh, where does this person come from, the samok? Then he looked at Danda. So then he said, no, I'll discipline, chastise him. And he said, no, I'll beat him. Then he said, may my daughter even become a widow. May this fellow even die. Then, Sir Omar Charya, he was a priest of the king. He was the Mahatma. And immediately, Amog, he fell ill. And he had this Vishushika, means he had cholera. And uh, he was vomiting, he was doing all these things, and he was... Uh, and having loose motions and all these things. He was suffering so much. So then they, someone told Mahaprabhu that, oh, the son in law of Sarvam Pratishara may die at any moment. So Mahaprabhu did not call anyone. Immediately he called, he went from the Kambira, and there he saw Mogu was suffering so much. He only had his bones and other things left behind. Everything else had melted off his body. Then, anyhow, Mahaprabhu he went, entered inside and then he put his hand on Mogu's heart. And he said, the heart of a Brahman should be very pure. Where is this chandal, chandalini? Where is this woman of envy? How is she residing in your heart? Leave this envy behind. Leave this tendency to criticize others behind. This chandharinam. And Mahaprabhu was looking. With his great compassion, he looked at Amok. And as Amok chandharinam, then he became healthy again. And Saramadachara said, why did you save him? Immediately this person should have been punished. But Mahaprabhu is very magnanimous, very compassionate. So therefore, by staying with a Kanishtha Adhikari, one will do sadhan, and one will have this Ekanishtha. And then, he will learn how to respect this Uttam Bhagavad. And then one will get this opportunity to learn from him. And then, by the mercy of a Madhyam Bhagavad, one can understand the Uttam Adhikari. You see, Prabhupada Sashi Thakur, he told Vinod Bihari Brahmachari, he takes some bhaktas. Then you go, Darshan of Omsi Das Babaji Maharaj. So when they have Darshan of Omsi Das Babaji Maharaj, there are so many bhaktas there. They crossed the Ganga and they came there. There when he came to the temple, there it was the time of winter. And then in the morning, Babaji Maharaj distributing the tea prasad to everyone. So and they said, oh, Babaji Maharaj is distributing this tea. Take some of this tea. They said, did you come for this tea prasad or for the mercy of Babaji? Then they said, it's very cold now in the winter. So drink some of this tea. And then we'll be... So because Gaudiya Mahatma not drink tea. Then we know he said, no, let's go inside. There they went inside. There there's hot, hot khichdi was being distributed. Then they said, we'll take some of this khichdi. He said, no. This is not for us. Then when they went a little more front, there they saw so many sweets, so many 56 kinds of food was being offered. Because if you want to cheat one of one's mercy, then you'll give this tea and all these things. Then they will not come to sadhu. Then only like these things. Then what happened? Then Parangurde, he didn't listen. He took him there. And there on the banks of the Ganga, there he saw this Tulsi garden there. And there Gaurnitai were present. Babaji Maharaj speaking to these deities of Gaurnitai. Then he was taking Gaurnitai, holding them to his chest, keeping them on his head, on his shoulders, and he was speaking to Gaurnitai in this way. And then they said, Oh Gaur, you're from Braj. So you go house to house and you steal. But Nitai is very innocent. He doesn't go anywhere. Have you ever heard? Krishna, he goes house to house to steal. But Baladev, he never went stealing house to house. He never went and stole. He never went and stole from anyone's house. So this way you see. Nita will make arrangements for him. But Gaur is very intelligent. Gaur, he goes with his kitan. Sometimes he's going, he's taking butter, he's taking fruits, he's taking sweets. But Nita is very innocent. And Babaji Maharaj, he said, all right, I'll go and bring something. 
And there he went and he found one this bale fruit. And then he said, Nitai, we didn't have achieve, we didn't get anything today. At least eat this fruit, bale fruit. And all the bhaktas were saying, just see Babaji Maharaj. Therefore, if one goes near the Bhagavats, then the Mahabhagavats have this great opulence. Which is great opulence is being diffused in all four directions. We want this opulence of theirs or their kripa or their blessings. Therefore, Prabhupada Sitakur he says, Guru is not Bhagwan, he's not Gopinath, he's Sevak. He's one pointed Sevak of Bhagwan. He's his Priya. He's the Ashra Vikra. But not Vishay Vikra. Don't think of Sri Guru as God himself, as Bhagwan himself, as Krishna himself. Guru is the manifestation of Bhagwan. He is the Ashra Jati Vastu. Therefore, don't think of Guru to be Brahma, like the Nivrisheshwadis, like Brahma. This is a great offense. This is very atheistic. This is Mayavad. To think of Guru as being one with Sri Bhagavan. Because who is Sri Guru? He is Chaitanya Das. He is manifestation of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And by serving Sri Guru, one will be freed from Maya Devi. And one will achieve the Lord's feet of Sri Krishna. So, so Gurudev, he is Krishna Prashta. He is Bhagavan's Priyajan. So by taking his shelter and by being under his anagatya and by following his Vishardhara, one can follow in his own life. One should pray to him. If we follow on our own, we will not be able to follow. We will not be able to practice. When he first came to the temple, Gurudev would wake up at 2 or 3 in the morning and be chanting Harina. And we see when we come in the morning, Mangalati at 4.30 or 5, we wouldn't be able to stand properly, we wouldn't, we'd be sleeping, we'd be half awake. And immediately after Mangalati, we'd go and sleep. But that time you see our Guru Vargavar. But in our minds and hearts, we think, how is it possible? So as long as Guru Kripa is not had, as long as we do not pray, then one will not get this Shakti. One can try on his own, but without the desire of Krishna, it will not bear fruit. Because we, our desire is also not so pure. Therefore, when there cause this mercy is upon us, then it will be had. So one should also pray. Only when they see our attempt, then they will give mercy. If we don't even attempt, do not have this desire, then they will not give. Only when there is a need, then they will give. You see, even if uh, you do not get food, no problem. But still, one likes sleep more than food. But how can this tendency to fall asleep go away? How can this thirst go away? This hunger go away? <coughs> how can all these different attachments go away one after another? And at other times, what happens? One can, when he's sick, he cannot even eat, he cannot even drink. And what will he do then? But when he leaves his body then, what will happen? The Saddha Mukti is had. Therefore, even if one gets water or food, no harm. Even if one gets sleep or not, still gradually one will become detached from his body. And then by the desire of Bhagavan, one will gradually advance. Sometimes you see, one will not even sleep for many days, he will not even eat anything for many days. And there is no connection in this way. One will have no concern. Why? Because he's being, she's being showered with this Bhagavatras. He's content with this Bhagavatras. So one goes to Sadguru and Sadbaishnavas. And one starts praying. And one will avail himself of their mercy. And if one becomes a Kripasiddha, then what will happen? Then he'll realize how time is invaluable. We'll not waste even one moment. Then he will think, before I wasted this time, why? Why did I waste this time? At all times he is um, very uh, attentive. He will not lose even one moment of his life. No, then he will realize, time is life. Then even a fraction of a moment, pramanu, should not be wasted. Or else again, karma will be made, newer and newer karma. If I don't waste even a single moment, 
because the day that is lost will not be returned again. So therefore, one should be very careful, not lose his time. We have heard also before that if one doesn't do bhajan, if he doesn't do naam kirtan, if he doesn't chant the mantra, then then we will be scorched with this volcano that is erupting from within. One is being scorched by the body, by the mind, by the senses. Let's say the other living entities are a source of so much pain. And then gradually one falls into chronic depression. And one is always very fearful. Anyone he sees, he'll run away from them. Why does he become like this? So he's always uh, burning in this fire. He cannot even douse this fire. Because he's not been in satsanga, he's not had a satvaidya, a good doctor. Who will free us from this tiktap? From these threefold miseries? One will achieve siddhi, but then no qualification because he's not done Guru Anuvatya. And you see, Praktan Karma means his karma from his previous life. It's all coming. All these fruits of karma, they're coming one after another. So who will free one of these fruits of karma? Therefore, there is prarabdha and aprarabdha, scoot and papij, avidya smita, ragdvesh and abhinivesh. So many things are being uh, amassed in our hearts one after another. So who will free us of these things? Sarubha Goswami is written. Digest by a revelation of the holy name, then all kinds of karma go away. You see, even if one becomes qualified to realize his Brahma, the impersonal effulgence, still this part of the karma, you'll have to suffer from it. Prabhupada karma means the karma that constitutes this body. Or else you see, one will have to suffer. One will think, I've committed so much sin. If I give in charity, then all these sins will go away. But this is not so easy. Even if piety is there, one will have to enjoy the fruits of piety. So how can one be free from these fruits of sin, fruits of piety? One will have to anyhow enjoy or suffer from them. So that time one will go bathe in the Tirtha. So then one will get total relief. When he takes medicine, he will be freed from that disease. But one will have to be diagnosed as well. So one doesn't get a good doctor, a good sadhu. Then who will free one? Because in this world, you see, one is committing sin and one will have to suffer from the fruits of his karma. How will the fruits of his karma go away? One will have to suffer from the fruits of his punya. So therefore, just by uh, revelation of the holy name, one is continuously remembering Sri Bhagwan, then you see, karma will never affect him. Then you see punya, tap, sin, nothing will affect him. Because if one goes to the king, then why should he fear? We surrender to the king. You see, one is not fearing anyone. Therefore, when, when one is taking shelter of Bhagwan and is always remembering him, his Pradhana Pradha will never affect him. Because he's done so much, but he's under my shelter now. So now he'll not have to suffer from anything. Maharaj, Dharmaraj, you forget everything. Now you tell your assistant, Chitragupta, to erase everything from his book. Because he's Dharmaraj. He, is, he has this knowledge of Dharma. So once he's taken shelter of Bhagwan, then what can one possibly say to him? Therefore, if one if one is uh, under the shelter as Vrindavan Nath, Shri Krishna, Chandra, and who is the eternal son of Nanda and Nishoda, he is not the son of anyone else. So if one under, under the Anugati of Nanda and Nishoda, if one desires Bhagwan, then Bhagwan 
will also give that person a position like Nanda and Yashoda, fatherly position like Nanda, and motherly position like Yashoda. Here, Devaki Nanda and, and Vasudeva Nanda is not being spoken of here. Here, Nanda Nanda and Yashoda Nanda, they are being spoken of, he is being spoken of here. Because Devaki Nanda and Vasudeva Nanda, their worship is not as great as that of Yashoda Nanda, Nanda Nanda. And to serve them, as an Anugatya, is to please Krishna. The worship of Krishna is greater. The worship of Nanda Nisha is greater than the worship of Krishna. And by their mercy, the worship of Krishna has had. Nanda Nanda is always staying in Vrindavan. And this way, he is also present in the Jivatma's heart. When the heart is made pure, then they desire to serve. And this way, in their hearts, Bhagavan is always coming and residing there. So, if one desires this tendency to serve, then go and ask the Prachavasis. The Prachavasis just see how they go serve Bhagavan. To achieve mercy of the Prachavasis, one should not be impatient. One should gradually follow, serve. Then realize this Sevananda, Nityananda, Paramananda. And this way, only in Braj, one can have this Seva. Because they are Niswarthapar, they are selfless. They have nothing to give, nothing to take. Thinking there is no such thing of any, any remuneration. Automatically, by serving the Rajwasi, the service of Krishna has had. Now that this service only runs for two or three days, the service is eternal. They are always appointed in their service to Prabhu. They have no Bhog Buddhi, no Tyag Buddhi. And by engaging in seva continuously, their hearts become pure, their minds become pure. And then they will not be attracted by this Rupras Kandasparsha, by the attraction of form, beauty, smell, taste. And when their minds are pure, this Nirmal Chitvarti, then they will realize Bhagavan in their inmost core of their heart. And then they'll have Ruchi for listening to the Shastras, reading the Shastras. And then they will realize this Vani of the Shastras in their hearts. Therefore, Mahaprabhu he said, he says, when, when one serves the Rajavasis, then the words the Shastras are realized as true. Past, present, future. Because Bhagavan's Kripa Murti, Shri Guru, he appears in front of one. And this, the, uh, the image of the soul and the relationship with the super soul is transmitted into his heart. Means the image of Bhagavan himself appears in his heart. Then he'll realize Bhagavan is my Palanhar, my nourisher, my maintainer, my Arjun. Then he will no longer listen to his mind. And then he will no longer desire to cheat others by discussing the Shastras. Because the word to the Shastras are very straightforward. But we see we add some things. We uh, add some mixtures. We think this is alright, this is alright, this is alright. We'll do these things along with that. This and that. You drink milk. But in the winter you also drink alcohol, drink some wine. Wine also makes your body warm. Because wine is also medicine. Milk also makes your body warm. But wine, wine is also. You see, even Baldav, Baldav also used to drink wine, the Somras. So why not we? And you see, in Prabhashetra, all the other words, they drank this wine. So I am. So why not? Why not me? See, Baldav, he drank wine, Baldav also drank milk. So everything is okay, no problem. Because we don't mix. You see, an alcoholic, he will not listen. So therefore, we will not do Kirtan of proper Katha. Because we, we have to flatter, flatter others. And then who will give us Dakshina then? Who will be our followers? But there's no need to follow this path. Of in, of in, in this faulty path. We, no, there's no need for us to flatter anyone. We are the Sevaks of the Sevaks of, of Prabhu. We are Dasanudas. 
Shri Prabhu, Shri Bhagwan. Just as the Vajrasi serve, we'll have to serve not like the Dwaraka was used to, the other one she used to. Because if you go to Dwaraka, then you'll go to Pravas. And there you see, Krishna, he made everyone drink this wine and he killed everyone. But no one could do anything to the Vajrasis. Because the Vajrasis, they don't drink anything. You see, even if you give them wine, will they drink? They said, go away from here. You see, even when they went to have Darshan of Vaikuntu Pati Narayan, still they said, we don't wish to have the Darshan of Vaikuntu Pati Narayan. We only wish to see our Kanaya. And it isn't Danda, Nishwada and Radharani. Dargavasis are cheated by Krishna. But can the Rajavasis be cheated by Krishna? It's not so easy. Mm, they say, go away from here. They will not even listen. Krishna, go away from here. Go away from here. Madhav, Keshav, Krishna, go. There he goes there. They are under the test fixed. They are only under the Anugatha of Radharani. They will not say Krishna, Krishna. They will only say Radhe, Radhe. They will not say Jai Shri Krishna. They say Jai Shri Radhe. They will not say Shri Krishna, Sharanam Mama. They say Shri Radha, Sharanam Mama. Therefore, Krishna, he says that this Braj is not run by one's mental speculation. Manodharma. And this Braj is not running according to one's own personal belief. Mm, the Shastra. The meaning of the Shastra is only manifested when one follows the, in the footsteps of the Vrajavasis. And one who is Pandita Mani, he will cheat. But he has not understood the purport of the Shastras. They will cheat the people of the purport of the Shastras. So, but he will never say, he will, he will never say, take shelter of Braj, take shelter of the Rajavasis. Become Nishkinchen, Akinchen like them. Nishkam. Be selfless like them. Therefore the gopis, they said. The gopis, they call themselves unpaid maidservants. On Nashul Katasika. They never told Krishna that we are serving you, so we need something in return from you. Never. See, they left everything before. But it's a Tanvaya Bratri Vandavan. Ativilingate Anchitagata. So we're taking shelter of Sadguru, then Sadguru, is, by his great mercy, one will surely reach Braj Vrindavan. And they say, one will have the Anugatya of Nanda and Yashoda. Sridam Sudam Dam Vasudam. So one will be under the Anugatya. Anugatya of Srimadhi Radhika and the Vajiko peace. Listen tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> 